Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. So, we all knew that NPM can be quite a scary place because of substitution attacks. All of these packages that we trust are no longer the packages that we trust. For the, If you don't know, NPM is a node package manager. Node is a really, really useful tool offers all kinds of really useful packages that you can just download from the NPM node package manager. But the thing is, are you sure you're actually downloading the right package? Because what attackers will sometimes do is take things like open source packages, for example, and insert malicious code in there. Or what they'll try to do is mimic a package that your company uses on a private repository and they might try to put that on a public repository get you to download that one instead. But how do we know exactly if we want to trick an organization what kind of secret packages we should try to fake? Well this is where the researchers at Aquasec have found something really cool and they talk about this as well. <coughs> you see that they have made a random organization that has a secret package They've confirmed that the package exists, so they've actually published it, confirmed that the package exists in the random organization. Now, what does the timing attack consist of, actually? So, for this we have to move to JMeter. I've prepared a little bit of a script for you, one with a request that exists, and one with a package that doesn't exist. I'm using the packages that the researchers used as well. Now let's make five requests, shall we? One. Okay, we make our request. There we go. Now let's go on to the next one. Two, three, four, five. Look at this. Look at how this is going. The minimum here is 39 milliseconds. The minimum here is 128 milliseconds, but <clears throat> the maximum, and that is the first request, was a lot higher. Why is that? Well, if we erase everything here, let's repeat our request again. 132, 37, 126, 36, 123, 134, 40, 134, 43. You can see definitely that there is a timing difference in a package that exists and a package that doesn't exist in this case. And we can also see it clearly if we look at our aggregate reports in our 90%, 95% and 99% lines. Here we can easily see that there is a big difference in these requests. But what does this actually mean? Back to our little uh, report here. So here we can see that it takes less time to get a reply for a private package than it does compared than uh, that does not exist compared to a private package that does. Meaning that it takes more time for this one than for this one. Same results at, as what we just saw. So what they're proposing is that an attacker could potentially abuse this to get to know the the list the organization's list of npm packages and potentially pose as one of those npm packages because there's things like prefixes for example uh, you can see that we have a prefix like this this is what a, a prefix can be made of and an attacker can use this to refine their list. They can also use online public data sets where an attacker could use, uh, could use that to look for public packages that have like that were deleted that are no longer there but maybe they were just converted into private packages and that's why they were deleted especially happens with with the public packages that get a lot of traffic that suddenly get deleted for example. So there, there's different ways. Another way could be for example as you can see here a package called GraphQL Cochan slash visitor plugin common getting a hell of a lot of downloads. There might not even be a repository called that. So what, what an attacker can do is they can take that name visitor plugin common on npm. Only thing is 
Their organization might look like GraphQL code gen, just missing that dash or like GraphQ code gen or something, you know, like a little bit of a typo because this, this specific repository here, this package, I keep calling it a repository, but it's package, of course, this package gets 2.2 million downloads. If an attacker gets just a fraction of those downloads, they can be happy. Now, of course, they need to run a time attack, one that we just saw, a timing attack to find out which packages are secret for an organization and which ones are not. And then they can build a public package based on that containing some bad code. <clears throat> now, especially in recent times, a lot of NPM packages have been found to contain malicious code. So you need to be really, really careful when you talk about NPM packages with malicious code. For example, NPM malicious code. JFrog had a great article about that where they looked at 25 repositories that had one of these malicious pieces of code in it. So they looked at 25 packages. They found, for example, n colors sync. Now don't download this. This is a Discord token stealer, but it's masquerading as colors. Colors is a very popular package. Color self as well. Also a Discord stealer, also masquerading color self too, did exactly the same thing. Wafer text is an environment variable stealer together with wafer countdown, wafer template, wafer Darla, and Lima and Discord token stealer, uh, ADV Discord utility, Discord token stealer, tools for Discord, Discord token stealer. This is what they mean with that typo squatting. So you have like wafer dash and then a star. If you create a wafer package that has like wafer dash and then anything like that sounds legit and you, you just upload malicious code under that, that could be a malicious package, of course. We have node block, no blocks.js add on as a Discord token stealer masquerading as no blocks.js. We have, well, what is that? <laughs> a connect back shell. Uh, Mark.js, Python remote, code injector, crypto stand, same thing, masquerading as crypto.js. So you can see that these are very, very, <clears throat> like, how should I, like, these are dangerous times, and you have to be really, really careful that you're not downloading NPM packages, which you shouldn't be downloading. Of course, it's really hard to know exactly what you should be downloading and whatnot. That's why it pays off to look at the company, the official company that you're downloading from, make sure that you're using their NPM repository and not some kind of rogue repository. But it's getting harder and harder to find the difference though. Let's look at some of these things that JFrog found, shall we? So JFrog found, for example, Lima package. It's targeting malware authors. Now you're probably thinking, malware authors, what? Yep, exactly, malware authors. This package is a helper module for novice Discord malware authors that provide common functions that may reuse when supplied with the victim's Discord token, such as getting the victim's credit card information, stealing the victim's account, etc. However, one of their functions, remove all friends, will hijack the supplied Discord token to a hard-coded webhook address. And if we look at that, you wouldn't even be able to tell it. Like, this looks so strange, it's obfuscated, of course. Now, when they de-obfuscated it, it looked like this. This is a lot more nefarious. As you can see, we have a malicious webhook with a post being made to that specific webhook with the content being that specific token. So, of course, when you are developing malware, you might download Lima thinking, oh, I'm getting some easy functions I can get here, like get bots, check password, get to FA, etc. But in all actuality, one of those functions, remove all friends, would steal the token you're trying to steal. <laughs> Isn't that a strange twist, twist of faith? Now let's look at marked JS and crypto standards packages, a duplicated throwing package. Now what does this mean? Basically, they duplicate the complete, complete 
package page, everything, the meta metadata, the package data itself, the source code, except there's one little line of code that he might throw in there or one little piece of malicious code that he might put in there. So it's really, really hard to find the correct, the correct repository, the correct package page. As you can see, the, the uh, metadata is original here. You can see that it has the original name, it has a duplicate name, everything seems to look fine. But in the source code, there seems to be some problems. Last off, the vira.js package. Very small, the malicious code can easily be seen, but interestingly enough, the author of the malicious package decided to steal the Discord token, not from local disk storage, as most stealers would, but rather from browser's local storage. So it spins up basically an iframe, attaches that iframe to your document. Uh, in that iframe, it's going to grab that Discord webhook here and it's going to make a post it's, uh, to the token grabber. Uh, what am I saying? It's going to make a request, a new request, a post request with a content type application JSON with the parameters username token graven and avatar URL and the content of that token. And as we can see, it's grabbing that content dot local storage dot token and not from the disk itself. So why would you want to do this? If the user is basically logged in through their browser and not through their desktop application, then this is the malware for you. As you can see, quite the wild landscape out there in npm world i hope you guys enjoyed watching this and i will put a article in here one by uh, our good friends at aquasec an, an article here we go avoiding npm substitution attacks now this is not oh sorry this is a github article i should say so i'm going to put this in the description below as well in case you guys are interested or working with npm here is how you can protect yourself against substitution attacks thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will see you in the next one bye amazing hackers